Hey y'all and welcome back to the shed. Um, today I'm going to go over uh, one of the EcoWorthy PV combiner boxes. Um, it is a four string one, not the six string. And basically it is used for connecting your panels together. Um, individual strings is what I prefer. Some people will run panels I suppose. Just a one panel per to hook them in um, parallel and they also say in series, which really is not set up for series, but I'm going to show you guys how. It's actually pretty straightforward if you know what you're doing. Now, what do I like about combiner boxes? Well, combiner boxes typically have fuses in them or circuit breakers, and it just gives you an added amount of protection. Um, the EcoWorthy has a little surge protector in there also. Now, how effective is that surge protector? I don't know. You know, is I really don't. Um, I don't even know how to test it, to be honest with you, without getting struck by lightning or something. But, you know, we're going to take it as it's good, okay? Um, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at it here. Um, this is kind of what showed up in the box. Okay, so this is what arrived in the box, and it was just a plain brown box. There, there's no frills or nothing. Um, it showed up here with the combiner box itself, the instruction manual. And then I ordered the extra um, 15 amp fuses. They came a day later in a different package, but they did arrive. Um, this is a fuse operated, um, not operated, but a, a fuse type uh, combiner box with a safety feature of a fuse. That I'm more of a circuit breaker guy, kind of like on my panel over here. I've got kind of the same thing going. Oh, actually, this is my combiner box here. I've got kind of the same thing going there, but I have um, circuit breakers that I can just reset. Um, it does cost more to do it that way, I can promise you that. So really, um, these are this is a pretty good option. Uh, the, the thing about these fuses is you have to be careful. I have another video out there I'll include in the link below. If you get cheap fuses, you get cheap results. Okay, so on the bottom of the combiner box, we basically have a, a, um, the DC inputs. We have four individual strings that can come in. Um, we have the negative input is you know closer to the front of the cover here. And then we have the positive input is towards the back of the cover. And then we have a DC output. We have a ground output and we have a DC positive output. So this is our DC negative output um, with the uh, uh, strain relievers or stress relievers, whatever you want to call them. And typically your cable can run through this and you can tighten it up by just turning that screw there. Um, of course, with the MC4 connectors, they just click and play, so to speak. Um, stuff like that, I'm not the biggest fan of because I do know the MC4 tends to um, fail eventually. Um, it's something I have to replace. And typically when there's something going on, it is um, has to do with the MC4 connection. Not saying that's gonna happen and not saying it happens all the time or that this is a bad box because it actually, it seems to be a pretty good quality. Um, and it's one of those things to where, you know, if you want like the, uh, you know, something that allows for conduit and stuff, you just end up paying a little bit more for it. And they've got you guys in mind for a budget here, okay? So we've got all of the different uh, details down here. And basically we've got, you know, a four string, max input current of single sol solar array is 10 amps. We can have a total of 40 amps um, input current for the whole uh, array, if you want, and 10 amps per string, okay? Um, maximum wattage, we can go 12, 24, and 48 volts. See if I can get that to tune in a little bit. And it's good for um, 720, 1440, and 2880 watts, depending on what configuration you're going in. And a max voltage input of 250 volts, okay? So it does have a circuit breaker, two pole circuit breaker in there with a rated current of 63 amps. Um, I kind of hope you guys can see that. And then it weighs about four pounds. It's just not a bad little unit, really. I'm actually fairly impressed with the quality of this. Let's go ahead and open this up here. Let's see what we got on the inside. Okay, so you can see on the inside, we've got a pretty nice little setup here. Um, 
little bit tight in there, but not too bad. I've, I've worked with much worse. Um, this is our ground, our negative side coming in from the panels, all of the blue. And then in the back here, you can see where, let's eh, see if I can get a good angle with some light in there. So you can see the other side of the MC4, um, the red, which indicates it's uh, positive in this case, um, going up into these fuse holders. And then we've got the red coming out. These are all attaching to a common bus bar. And then we've got a lead out of the bus bar that goes into our circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is connected in parallel with the surge protector here. Okay, your uh, negative side of the panels, they kind of come up and over and they all connect into a common bus bar. And then they are connected at the uh, other side of your breaker pole here. So you've got a positive and a negative which on the positive and negative side down here, this is actually, this is where your, um, your PV array, you know, your combined uh, array is gonna come out of. You're gonna have your positive and your negative wire and it's gonna poke out through your two uh, st uh, stress reliefs down here, okay? And then we've got in the bottom of this here, we actually have a spot for the ground and then the ground comes out of the back of this uh, stress relief here the one on the right so not a bad setup really now let's take a look here by what I mean by a fuse holder so if you pull this up we basically have a little fuse tucked away in there kind of tucked in there too there it is so but we've got a little 12 amp fuse in there and that 12 amp fuse is rated for a uh, thousand volts which is going to be fine okay right now that's what i have in each uh it for each of the four string uh strings and then you could probably see down here these uh fuse holders they're actually rated for 30 amps and a thousand volts so I've got 15 amp breaker, or fuses, sorry, um, that I can put in there. Could probably go 20 pretty comfortably. And then our main breaker here um, for our DC out, this would go off and out and over to your controller or, and then off to your inverter per se, is 63 amps in total. You can get away with a lot less than that, I'll be honest with you. Um, 40 amps would be fine. And in all actuality if it ever got that hot it'd be something else because these wires are actually um, 11 AWG which is rated for about 25 amps so you don't want to pretty you don't want to go over that your wires are holding you back okay so that kind of sums it up for that and let's go ahead and uh, we'll just kind of head on out we'll get this set up in a mock scenario and we'll wire it up in parallel show you about that which is really straightforward and we'll also do it in series okay when I'm doing it in series we'll show you how to actually pop these little fuse holders out and these breakers and the surge protector because these are all DIN rail mounted pretty straightforward um, that way if you wanted to put some uh, like some terminal blocks in there or something like that do something a little bit different you could definitely do it okay so we'll take a quick look at how to uh, connect this all in series um, as described before, it's already set up for, oops, instructions are in place here. It's already set up for parallel. You know, we have the, uh, you know, your, your, your negative coming in here to the negative bus bar and then the positive coming in here and going through all of your fuse holders and into the positive bus bar. But there's a little trick to making this all um, in, in series so you want to make a couple of your strings in series now which is all we're going to do today we're just going to go over how to take two strings and connect them in series as opposed to having them in parallel and I've just got some uh, lines down here representing um, the two strings so for here you would have um, say string number two we've got our negative on top the black and then our positive on bottom um, which actually would be in the back if the combiner box was upright and then over here on this side you know we've got our string number one okay so let's go ahead and start out with our basic two series two parallel configuration um, using this uh, four string combiner box um, this would be just utilizing the combiner box 
as it was intended upon purchase. And so we can call this um, your string one here and this string two here. You can see the positive from string one is coming up to here and then going into the fuse box holder and then that transfers through to the positive bus bar. String two is doing the same, it's just in the next fuse box holder over and um, strain relief going into the combiner box and again it goes back to the parallel bus bar to take these two strings and combine them in a parallel configuration so the voltage would stay the same with this and then the amperage would increase now the problem with that could be in the wire size itself if you have say a, a set of panels that is exceeding amperage for the wire that you're using um, you could create a fire hazard or even the fuse itself so in order to keep that down to a minimal level we could start combining things in series in order to keep the voltage higher for an easier startup for your controller and keep the amperage lower so we can have a lower or smaller wire gauge okay so let's take a look over here at um, how to connect all of this in the diagram. Um, we'll do it via diagram for connecting this in series. Okay, so in series, you can see that it's a little bit different up in this area right here. So you can see on our string one, instead of having the negative line come out and connecting to the negative bus bar, it bypasses that and comes around and it connects to the um, other side of your fuse box or fuse holder two. And then on the opposite side of that fuse holder two, we have the positive side of our string two of the panels and it connects here. That is essentially right here. That is what is making or series connection between the two string arrays or strings whatever you want to call it okay and then from here we have you know at our fuse one or you know coming back here to string one of our panels it carries through and goes to our positive bus bar and then on the other side for string two at our negative side negative polarity it comes through and travels all the way through to our negative bus bar then of course this transfers out um, none of this is going to be changed um, we're going to leave it the way ecoworthy set it up um, with our main breaker and our surge protector so this diagram here i would take a screenshot of this and use it for reference and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm fairly available and usually get back with people within 24 hours. Okay, so as I explained in the diagram, or I will explain in the diagram, is that, you know, in order to connect things in series, of course, you're going from panel to panel, positive to po negative, positive to negative, so on and so forth. And you can also connect, you know, two separate strings together. Um, let's say that you have two different um, trackers um, and you want to connect them in series in order to maximize voltage without going over voltage, of course, and keeping your amperage minimal so that way you're not going over amperage. And there's a way you can do that in this particular box, um, but you do need to dismantle a few things. Um, it's not too bad. So essentially, you know, like I said, we're going to be, you know, going from positive to a negative on, you know, two opposite strings. We could even call them like two opposite panels or something of that nature. Okay. Because once you have a string of panels together, you can almost look at it like just one big panel. All right. So this will be kind of fun. Um, of course, you you know might be breaking a little warranty here. Um, I know I am right now just by unclipping some of this stuff. Although they do say it's for connecting, you know, in series and parallel. And one of the okay. So before we get too far into it, um, you know, I'll show you how to disconnect these, and you can actually pop these out because they're on a DIN rail. So essentially, we're going to take our screwdriver. 
And let's start out with like um, this one over here in pole position, the first one. We'll just go ahead and loosen up the screw on the uh, bus bar there. And you can see it's pretty loose now. And then we're going to go down here. We're going to loosen it up at the breaker itself. Well, maybe I am. There we go. We'll just get in there. Loosen that up a little bit. Now that should, see that's pretty loose now. She's coming out. And then we'll loosen up this one here. And get that good and loose. And then what I'll do is I'll take my pliers here. And I'll just kind of gently pull that out. And you can see where they've got the um, terminal end here. Um, basically what they have here, if you're wondering what this is, um, is a part of a crimping set. And I bought these online actually I'll include a link for that and it's pretty pretty fun actually better than using the frayed edges for some purposes not all purposes but the bare wire itself is what I mean so once you get everything loosened up here if you look closely down here at like the bottom of the fuse uh, or the fuse holder right in there you can actually see a little red tab and if you take your screwdriver and you pop it in there and you kind of pull that red tab out just like that then this will actually oops pop right out of there now I'm gonna wrestle with it here for a second you kinda gotta pull out the bottom and then push it up and it'll slide right out like that and then we have our fuse holder right here um, this fuse holder is rated for 30 amps. Um, you can see it's PV rated, um, 30 amps right there. Um, it's CE rated, which is great for Europe, but um, here in the US we need something that's UL rated. But you know, everything's being sold online, so anything goes per se. Um, I do have faith in the fuse holder. I haven't heard anything bad about them, but we will be putting them to the test in another video. Now this is a clip I was talking about, and you can see how it kind of clips in and out and you can use the screwdriver once it's you know when it's in and you can stick the screwdriver in the end and just pop it right out like that and then this whole thing will come off of the din rail which you can see the din rail there in the back okay now from there you can see that little jumper wire came right out it looks like they just soldered the end of the wire there, which I'm not the biggest fan of the solder, um, but I think it's going to be okay. That's just my take on it. So we'll put that to the side. And what we're going to do, so remember, we're going to be hooking positive, negative, negative to positive, yada, 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 in order to make this series. So let's go ahead and unhook one of these wires here. Okay, because we're going to be hooking, you know, the positive of one string to the negative of, of the other string, we're going to want to disconnect this one up here also. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Now, in a perfect world, it might be better off and simpler to run, you know, make sure you're not combining um, too many amps or volts, but sometimes... It just kind of happens where you've got to do something a little bit different. So we'll just go ahead and disconnect this one all together, I believe. Just for the fun of it. For simplicity's sakes. Now, for some reason, this one feels pretty loose on that din rail. I don't like that. It was just kind of wedged in there. We'll pop that tab up. Now it popped out fairly easy. Let's go ahead and reach in here and grab that little jumper wire there. So this is interesting. They have actually two different terminal clips. I'm not a big fan of how they did this. And these are actually loose. This is not going to be a good review. These are actually loose within the MC4. Um, already, I don't like... I, I, I don't like loose connections, I'll put it that way, um, which is why I'm a fan of a, another combiner box. We'll go over that in another video, though. This is for EcoWorthy. So, these are loose in here. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that. They are loose within the MC4 connector, which is 
doesn't um, doesn't give me a lot of confidence actually. Um, loose connections create heat, heat creates fires, yada yada yada. So we're going to go from like the negative of let's say string one. So let's disconnect that. Okay, so that's disconnected. This is the negative side. And we're going to connect it to the positive of string two, which is over here. So connecting it like this, you know, is essentially what we're going to do. But we're going to utilize the fuse block. So we're just going to put an inline fuse in there. Um, 30 amper or 15 amper or 12 amper, not a 30 amper. <laughs> Whatever we have there, I think we'll just stick with it. So we'll go ahead and reuse this fuse box here. We'll just kind of get it snug like that. Now, then we're going to take this. This is going to go in like right here. We want to make sure we don't have any insulation in between the terminal contacts because that'll create heat also. Let's just go ahead and tighten that up like so. We'll just snug it for now. We'll tighten it all back down in a minute. Then we're going to pop this on. We go to the top first. So we're going to kind of hook it over the uh, the DIN rail there, right? Well, that is interesting. So we're going to hook it over the DIN rail on top, and we're going to push it into the bottom. And then we're going to snap that clip up into place, and it's going to ride right there, okay? So next, so what is it? So now you can see this creates, we've got the positive coming in from the array or string number two going through this breaker and it's con um, connecting to the negative of string number one. So we have a full loop here, all right? And we can go ahead and put that to the side. And then we can go ahead and pop this one back in. So this one here, let's go ahead and get it started over here, just like we did the other one. Okay, that's on there fairly snug. Oops. We go like that, snap it right on into place there. Now we can take our jumper again, because remember, now we're going from our positive of string, uh, our first string, we're coming over here, and we're going to go ahead and connect it right up into the bus bar. Which we probably should have, like, uh, Make sure our fuse goes back in. One thing nice about fuses is you don't have to um, worry about whether whether or not they're polarized, which is kind of nice actually. Oops. Okay, we'll just do that. Kind of get this set up into place here. that right up into the bus bar there click that over the din rail push it down click our tab up so we're nice and secure there okay and then we take it we just snug everything down okay We'll want to check this every couple of days. You're going to want to, you know, preferably do it at night when your panels are off, by the way. So we freed up a space in the bus bar. Make sure I don't have any plastic down in there or insulation, sorry. Okay, so that is essentially connecting 
this in a complete series alignment. We're going to have an extra jumper just hanging out for us, okay? So that's pretty straightforward like that. So we have two, two strings here that are now connected in series, all right? Not going to affect our amperage. It'll affect our voltage, and we don't want to go over voltage for our controller, but depending on what uh, panels you're using, you should be in good shape with that if you're keeping track of your voltage. Remember, voltage adds in series. Amperage adds in parallel. Let's go ahead and do a voltmeter test. Okay, so let's go over how I test it. I'm going to use a couple of 9-volt batteries to test the um, wiring configuration that I use to connect the two strings of panels in series within the combiner box itself. Okay, we just went over that. Now we want to test it first, which I highly recommend. Um, you could, essentially, you could damage your panels, your combiner box, your controller or yourself if you don't test up first to make sure that everything was is within which what would really be open circuit if you're going to test next we would test the panels and you do an open circuit test and you would want to make sure that you're not going to exceed your voltage there um, and amperage also um, that's for another video and if you guys are interested in that video let me know I do plan on making one but with a little nudge I can always make one sooner um, if I haven't already by the time you've watched this video. So using the two 9 volt batteries, let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what I've done. Okay, so I'm basically using the 9 volt batteries to mimic a string of panels, right? I've got my positive and negative off of the 9 volt battery and then hooked to the positive and negative of what would be string 2. And I have the same exact thing going on over here, mimicking string 1. So each battery, and we can test that with this one here, is going to come out to 9.3 volts, right? So in series, remember, voltage adds, okay? Current stays the same. So we have 9.3 volts on each battery. Um, I've already tested the other one, so we'll go ahead and just forego on that. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look here we have it mimicked in series. I already have the breaker on, so coming out of the main breaker here, we should have 9.3 plus 9.3, we should have 18.6 volts at the breaker. Let's go ahead and take a look-see here. Okay, so let's go to the negative and the positive, and let's connect them in there. Oh, well, would you look at that? We have 18.6 volts. So this wiring configuration is correct. Now, it's best to figure out how many voltage or how many volts you're allowed into your controller and try to figure out, and amps also, amps are important, by the way, um, and try to figure out whether you can use this as a pure, like parallel, 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 like uh, type configuration. Like I said, I guess it'd be like a four series, four parallel configuration if you wanted to do it that way. Or if you need, like you say you have two arrays and you wanted to make them like I'm doing here and going into a two series, two parallel configuration, okay? Let's go ahead and let's take a one final look at the wiring and what I did so you have a clear picture of it. And then we'll kind of move on to the next segment of the video. Okay, remember, we're taking the negative wire from our string one and we're going to connect it to the positive of string two so it's merely I am utilizing this fuse right here there's no problem with that at all okay and that's going through and that is connecting to that and then we've got you know the negative of string two just goes up to our ground bus bar Okay, and then we've got the negative of, well, we've already went over that. The negative of string one goes to, connects to the positive of string two. And then the positive of string one goes to our positive bus bar. Let's go over that again, okay? So we have the negative of string one connects via the fuse box to our positive of string two. And then we have the positive of string one that goes to the positive bus bar 
And then we have the negative of string two that goes to the negative bus bar. It really is just as simple as that, you guys. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Now you could also use like a terminal block in here, like a DIN rail mounted terminal block, um, as opposed to this and just connect them directly without the fuse. That wouldn't be a problem either, but this kind of allows everything to stay in place. Um, and you can keep all the parts together in case you go to a parallel configuration down the road. Who the heck knows? Not a bad way to go about it. Okay, folks, so there you have it. That's how I would utilize the EcoWorthy combiner box in order to connect um, two strings in uh, series. Um, things to remember is that you want to keep your amperage low and you know, hooking things up in series will increase your voltage. So you have, please be mindful that you don't want to exceed your voltage ratings of your um, controller or your controller inverter, um, your all-in-one unit, whatever it is that you're using. And always track the polarity coming out of the box because sometimes when you're switching the MC4s back and forth from the panels all the way through to the combiner box, um, and then onward to your controller, things can get mixed up. Um, so make sure that you're staying on track with things going from positive to positive and negative to negative, so that that way you don't damage your controller or inverter, or controller inverter, whatever you want to call it, your all-in-one unit or your controller, okay? Um, this can be a little bit of a brain buster or a twister, you know, it can make you think even though it's super simple, but just remember, it's just like any other power source, whether it be a string of panels or one panel or two, or two panels that you're hooking together in series or batteries, you know, it is in series. You're going positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. And remember, when you're going in series like that, your voltage increases, but your amperage stays the same. If you go in parallel, which is the opposite, you're going positive, 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 and negative, negative, negative connected together, then your amperage increases. We're not going over that in this video. Um, these combiner boxes are actually designed to connect strings or panels in parallel, but you can utilize them if things happen to work out to where you want to use them in, uh, for a series connection. EcoWorky, EcoWorky, EcoWorthy actually um, endorses that in one of their advertisements or something of that nature, I've, or their manual, I'll forget where it's at, but I'll find that and post it somewhere. Um, there's better ways to do it in different combiner boxes, which I'll have in some other videos where you can just connect the two wires together via a bus wire or something of that nature. When I say the two wires, I'm talking about like the two arrays together at the positive and the negative to hook them in series. Um, also, always make sure that you're keeping everything in specs. You know, keep your amperage in specs um, for wire sizes and fuse sizes and keep your voltage in specs for your controller or all-in-one controller, whatever it is you're using. It's super important and safety is always my main concern with anything and um, as far as the fuses go in this particular combiner box I have not tested them yet I have had other fuses um, that have been shipped from overseas that have absolutely failed and literally melted the housing and the fuse box around it without failing like it should I'll put it that way they failed in two different ways or didn't fail in the way they should and then they failed in the way they shouldn't right and that is they almost started a fire um, it's almost worth it to run down to a reliable you know local uh, electrical store you can buy this type of fuse there they are more expensive if you buy them like in my neck of the woods there's like a Grover electric and they carry uh, quality components for um, all of your electrical needs and even some solar and they carry the type of fuse that goes in these fuse boxes or fuse holders within the combiner box um, they're a little bit more on the spendy side but they're UL tested and they're reliable um, that's my only reservation about this, this particular uh, combiner box it's not UL tested or the components of it are not UL tested um, thus far it's not ETL rated so anyways um, there it is in a nutshell you guys can make it happen and that's pretty awesome thanks for tuning in and if you'd like to please like and subscribe so I can keep this channel going we're all learning a lot together never been about money um, it's just about keeping the channel going. Thanks, guys.